Welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and my guest today is John Rafferty, the MP for Thunder Bay Rainy River. Welcome, John. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So, John, you've been our MP for how long? When did you first get elected? 2008, uh, and uh, you might want to you know, remind your, your, uh, your listeners and your viewers that uh, it wasn't overnight. <laughs> no, you had, you had run a couple times before. <laughs> well, I was on radio until 2000. Uh, and then in 2000, I, I ran in the federal election. 2003, I ran in the provincial election. 2004, in the federal election. 2006, in the federal election. 2007, in the provincial election, which I barely lost. And then 2008, I was elected and then re-elected in 2011. So a little perseverance paid off. You do have some perseverance indeed, don't you? Well, you know what, it's, uh, you know, Northern Ontario, I, I've always thought and I still think is sort of, a, there, there are natural liberal voters here in Northern Ontario, right across Northern Ontario, not just here. And, uh, and uh, in 2000, I, I gave myself 10 years. I said, you know, if I work at this, uh, I can probably uh, get elected sometime within 10 years. Turned out to be eight years. Uh, so that was okay, um, uh, but but over the course of that time, of course, I knocked on just about every door in the riding, and so uh, by the time 2008 rolled around, I think just about everybody know who, knew who I was, and and uh, that's a big advantage, you know. If you uh, if you enter in and, and become the candidate uh, for a party uh, in in any election, part of your success is going to be on how well people know you. Indeed. So. So where did that perseverance come from? Where, tell us a little bit about uh, your early days and, and how you, you know, ended up here in Thunder Bay and... and uh... Well, I was, I was born in Southern Ontario uh, and that's where I went to school. And I came uh, north to Thunder Bay in 1979 uh, to, uh, for a year contract at Magnus. Uh, I, I had just recently graduated from, from uh, from a theater arts program at University of Waterloo and uh, had an opportunity to come here. One of the instructors, Maurice Evans, uh, at, at the school at University of Waterloo, in fact, was coming up to be, uh, to be the artistic director. And so uh, asked if I wanted to, to come along. I said, yeah, that'd be great. So uh, that, was, uh, that was the beginning of, of, uh, of my time in Thunder Bay. Now, over the years, I've had you know, a little bit of time off. I worked in Africa for for a number of years, and uh, uh, and uh, but but this is uh, has always been my home, and I always think of it uh, as my home. So I didn't know that you had spent some time in Africa. What were you doing over there? I worked for a, an organization called World University Service of Canada. They're still they're still around. It's a Canadian NGO uh, with its headquarters in Ottawa. And, uh, and I worked as a, as a field director for the organization looking after volunteers who, who uh, in, in this case, went to uh, two countries, Lesotho and Botswana in, in Southern Africa. So uh, it's, uh, it, was, it, it was a great experience and, uh, and I was happy to have that opportunity to do it. So what, I'm, I'm jealous now, you see. I love to travel. I've never been to Africa, never been to Asia. So what was a highlight or what, what really stays with you from your time in Africa? Well, I, I should say before that, uh, there was also a couple of years in West Africa, in Nigeria. And uh, what stays with me these days is uh, I, I taught s uh, school in a secondary school in a community called Bama, which is just outside of Maiduguri, which is in Borno State in the northeast part of Nigeria. And that's where Boko Haram is right now. Oh, my goodness. So I follow this very, very closely because uh, when, I see, when I see pictures of the area or or when I hear about uh, certain places Boko Haram is operating, or you know, remember those uh, those uh, schoolgirls that were kidnapped? Yes, and, indeed. And uh, you know, I know that area very well. Uh, it's been a number of years since I was there, but but uh, it's uh, uh, it's interesting how uh, that experience colors who you are, and in a way, throughout your life, continues to color who you are. And so, um, I've always I've always thought that it's very important. That uh, that young adults have an opportunity to uh, to travel and to work uh, overseas. And one of the things I liked about this program was it it took people fresh from maybe a little bit of experience, a year or two of teaching, mostly teachers, or uh, or directly from a teachers' college, 
and gave them a couple of years' experience. And uh, uh, and uh, I met uh, a lot of good people over the years, and uh, they've gone on to do to some quite wonderful things. So here you are now. You're you're a member of our our, our national parliament, our our senior level of government in Canada that deals with international affairs. You know, uh, there's all kinds of discussion around how do we relate to other countries and, and whether it's, you know, ISIS now is the hot topic, but of course, a lot of people say, how come we don't intervene in situations like in Africa as often as we do in a European type or well, a Middle East uh, setting? What, what do you do with that? What do you... Well, what I you think, think about you know, and, and as you say that, I'm thinking in particular of, of the Congo. Yeah. Uh, where, uh, where there have been, uh, been literally millions of deaths. And uh, while Canada has a very, very small presence there, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting to note that, uh, you know, we will, we will act in, in certain areas of the world um, where um, it's, you know, arguably not as serious as a place like the Congo. Uh, and um, I think part of the reason is that, that Canadians and, and certainly uh, legislators and, you know, the Prime Minister for that matter, doesn't really understand that part of Africa, that sub-Saharan part of Africa, uh, not having lived there. Mm -hmm. Now, I've traveled and lived there, and, uh, and I, so I have a different understanding of, of uh, what that's like. And, and of course, uh, you know, the, the situation in, in, uh, in Uganda and Rwanda, of course, uh, earlier, where we did have some peacekeeping, yes. and, and, uh, but... Uh, there seemed to be in the command at that time a, a lack of understanding of what was needed and what was required. So I think part of it is that, that, uh, that people in government uh, don't understand what is happening in, in those areas. It's much easier to say we have an enemy, we have uh, you know, these, these radical uh, guys, ISIS guys in, the, in, uh, in, in Iraq and in Syria and that makes an easier target and perhaps an easier to understand target than, than, than some of the horrible things that are going on in, in sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, we're, we're just coming up to a break, but when we come back, John, I, I want to revisit this because I want to imagine that we've got an election coming up, the NDP wins, you become the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and... Uh, what would be the first step we take in in terms of sub-Saharan Africa? So we're going to come well, right back Well, I'd hire John that. Barrett as my, as my assistant. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> there we go. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.